Blimey. Happy New Year. Ooh, creaky chair. Happy New Year. I got the lens that focuses. Check this out. Ooh. Should have worked. If it didn't, I've just wasted <coughs> pounds. Right, strings. I'm going to document this. I don't know if it'll, if it'll ever go out, but I'm going to document it anyway because Dan and I have the opportunity, towards the end of 2018, we, it's the 2nd of January by the way, we had the opportunity to spec some custom gauge string sets from Kurt Mangan. We both started using Kurt Mangan strings, um, really liked them, sort of surprised in a way because I got, I'd become relatively jaded about strings um, in that I know what I like and when I try other things they're either not different enough or some of the claims that manufacturers make often feel a bit uh, far-fetched to me. However, on the flip side of that coin, strings are such an intensely personal thing in terms of the gauges, the alloys, all of those kinds of things, um, it's hard to be objective about it. So I don't, never been that big a fan of tearing my heart out about strings because, you know, get one thing, get used to it, and then it's a constant. Anyway, tried these Kurt Mangans. Check out the focus. Ooh. Um, and really, really, really like them. So we've decided to start using them. And Kurt Mangan said, if you want to spec some custom sets, uh, we can do that. And we're going to do it for two reasons. One, first and foremost, we like the strings. Two is, it's another way for TPS to raise a bit of cash to help us run the whole thing. So here's Blue. Blue currently has... I've got Casey Musgraves keeping me company today on the stereo. Blue's currently got this set on, 10.5 to 48. I wonder if it will handle this, or if it's going to stay on my face. Hard to know, hard to know. I like them. I want, I'm wondering if the bottom strings can be a bit heavier, uh, and maybe whether that G string should be an 18 rather than a 17. So I'm just going to play around with some single strings here that I've got, that they've sent. Um, to decide on what the set for me will be. Dan's set will be an 11 to 52 probably, maybe 11 to 50, not entirely sure, but mine's going to be a 10 and a half to something. So I thought I would just, I'm not going to go through it laboriously because it'll take ages, but I just thought I would say that currently 10 and a half to 48, and by the time I'm done today, I'll have made a couple of decisions on the other, on the other sets. So what's, what's important about strings? Well, what I find is, you know, what time is it now? Half past 11 in the AM, been here, answered a few emails, done some things, you know, <laughs> half 11 in the morning, strings feel a bit, actually they feel pretty good actually. I was gonna say they, they can feel a bit stiff and unfriendly, but actually one thing I have found about the Kurt Mangans is they do feel kind of, they have really the, an elasticity that I really like. They're not super bendy, so I go over the whole time, but neither are they really stiff. I was using Dario's before, um, XL's, the standard 10 and a half to 48 set, I think 10 and a half to 50. Um, and they, by contrast, feel slightly stiffer than these. Now you can get into that if you want, you can start talking about the construction of the string, the shape of the core material, how thick the core is in relation to the wrap wire, all of that, and it all makes a difference in terms of tension and feel. Everyone has a really individual view on it. Um, mine is, you know, I don't really like really super thin strings because what happens is when it's not 11.30 a.m. and it's 10 p.m. and I'm on stage and I'm playing, what I find is the strings have much less tension or at least it feels like they are because I, you know, I've got the adrenaline going, I'm there, I'm ready. So what I need is a set that's gonna, where I'm not gonna overbend, that are gonna feel positive because the other thing I find is because I hit quite hard if I have very light strings they tend to go out of tune um, even under the force of just you know doing that so I like a set that's gonna stay really um, not warble about too much it's another reason I don't like those two-point bridges on strats because you hit it it warbles so yeah that's what I look for and materials wise I've always been really happy with just regular nickel steel sets um, some people who have nickel allergies prefer stainless steel, some pr people prefer the tone of stainless steel, some people prefer the tone of pure nickel, and these are all things that are worth experimenting with 
I've experimented with all of those things over the years and I find I just like the regular nickel steel um, strings. Uh, longevity is an issue, but I don't go through strings like some people do. Some people have really acidy sweat and can corrode strings really quickly. Mm. Coffee. Um, but I don't, I'm pretty easy on strings, I don't sweat that much. Um, so my strings tend to, I'll change them just when they go off, when their tone goes off, and that's usually for me two gigs max. Um, but I'm actually not doing that many gigs at the moment, so you know, a set of strings might stay on the guitar for a month if I'm not playing it very much. Um, so I'm, I'm easy on strings, so it doesn't cost a tremendous amount of money in changing strings, which is great. Uh, I think these are the best locking tuning pegs ever invented. Some people get really annoyed with them because they're a pain. There you go, here's how much of a pain they are. Some people say, should you replace one string at a time? Should you uh, um, take them all off? I always, always take them all off because uh, it doesn't seem to make too much trouble on a guitar where you don't have a floating bridge arrangement. If you've got something like, um, you know, one of those double locking bridges or even a PRS bridge, um, Taking them all off at once can be a pain, but what I do in the case of a PRS bridge is just fold the string picket, pack it in half, and jam it under the um, jam it under the back of the bridge so that it doesn't do that. Some people are into boiling strings. Yeah, maybe no bass players who do it. Right, so I'm going to go for 50 on the bottom instead of 48. I'm going to go up to just two thousandths of an inch. Um, now, for anyone who doesn't or hasn't done this or whatever, on strats, in through the back there, out through there, bosh. What I then do is I measure it about, I don't know, that far past the E tuning peg. You get a feel for how far is far enough after a while. Chop it off. Um, just lift this up for a sec, I don't quite know how high I am with the camera. So I'm going to add a guitar stand handy. So hopefully this will be in the shot. Um, in the hole, bend it around like that. I use my forefinger, first finger, to keep it against the thing. Wind it on. Actually, I'll cut that one a bit long, but that's alright. Um, on the low E and A strings, you're looking for two to three winds. Uh, I'm going to go with a 40 for the next one because currently in the 10 and a half to 48 the A string is a 38 and that just feels a touch light to me. So I'm just going to go up 2 to a 40. Exactly the same process. As I was saying on the E and A strings you're looking for 2 to 3 winds. 2 is usually enough. On the D and G strings 3 to 4. And actually three to four is probably enough on the top strings as well, but some people like to put a little bit more on there just to be on the safe side. And as I said, I think they're just the best locking tuners ever because once they're on there, as long as each successive wind goes underneath the last, and you do this, you keep a bit of tension on it as you wind it on, um, they just don't slip. For me, they, they never slip. Um, and it's there, even, even using the wang bar. So I've gone 50, 40, the next one is a 26 wound, again, which I think might be a little bit, it might be a little bit light for me, so I'm going to go 28. I better keep these packets so I can remember what's on there. And I'm getting the 28 out of the 11 set. Um, it's probably going to be a bit of an expensive process in terms of <laughs> wasted strings, but hey. Uh, right, and again. And through the back. By the way, I'm getting on famously with the Callahan Bridge. Really, really like it. I've been talking to some friends who I trust and who uh, tend to be on a similar page to me tonally. And they reckon it's worth trying standard Fender steel saddles because um, Callahan's ones 
can be a little bright sounding, a little hard. Apparently they've done some metallurgy, metallurgy, metallurgy tests on old vintage Fender saddles and they were hot rolled steel, they weren't cold rolled steel. And Callahan famously uses cold rolled, so it's harder. Okay, now we go on to the uh, 10.5 to 48. You know what? Yeah, no, I am. I mean, I'm going to stick with that 17 on the G string, I think. I wonder if they do a 17 and a half, because the 18 is just a little bit too stiff for me. Um, doing, you know, like if you do a um, David Gilmore type bend on the G string, the big tone and a half or might even be more than that. Anyway, quite a big bend. I find that can be a bit tough on an 18. So let's go 17, which is what this is. Now, because I've gone up a couple of thou, it shouldn't make too much difference to the nut. I think I might have mentioned to Johnny when he was cutting the nut that I might go up a tiny bit. So just a couple of thou here and there really shouldn't make massive difference. Um, if it does, and you're going up, you're changing string gauges significantly, then obviously you'll need to have the nut. It's probably too much, but anyway. Um, you'll need to have the nut recut, or at least widened. And obviously if you want to go down a string gauge, then you may need a new nut. Always find a hefty boot on the bottom of the guitar can uh, help keep it in place. Although I do have it balanced on this guitar stand. If you don't use a string winder, Try it, seriously try it. It just saves so much time. Um, and if you get these ones that have got the cutter on the end, it's a really handy thing. I think um, over the years I've been sent many, usually by Daddario, and um, I just leave them in every guitar case because they're super, super useful. Right, 14 for the B string. Again, try to 15. Too, too stiff, 13, not quite stiff enough, predictably enough. The other thing to think about is if you go up or down a string gauge and you have a floating bridge or at least a, a vibrato bridge on the guitar, it's gonna change the tension on the springs in the back of the vibrato. So you may need to make an adjustment there as well. What this will do, because there's gonna be a little increased tension compared to the 10 and a half to 48 set, uh, I may have to just increase the tension on those springs because as we discussed in the bridge, when I change the bridge out, um, I like the bridge to sit on the guitar, just on the body of the guitar and lift only on my very biggest bend. And what I find that does is um, puts enough tension in the arm for it to be stiff, but not impossibly so. So you can, you know, it'll work effectively. The other thing I've been checking as I've been doing this is just that the alignment of the strings as it comes out of the back of the guitar and over the saddle is kind of, you know, in the middle of the saddle. I've just been checking that visually as I've been doing it, but that's something else you need to do when changing strings. Just make sure that it's sat in the saddle correctly. Um, sometimes they can get snagged on other saddles or um, all of a sudden you've got to String snapping. String snapping, I hear you ask. How many strings do you break? Um, at the risk of, let's touch wood, almost none ever, in fact. I can't remember the last time I broke a string. Don't know why that is, but yeah, I don't have a problem with, with strings breaking. One of the reasons might be I'm a big fan of quite hard saddles. So ones that are made of either titanium or stainless steel. And when it's got a nice rolled edge, you know, a curved edge on it, there's no edges to get snagged. If you use anything else like those block cast saddles, sometimes the Gibson type saddles, you can get a sharp edge. Um, lots of people break strings back by the bridge. You know, here it will break there because that's the most acute angle.
stretching. Lots of people have different ways of stretching the strings. I tend to just, uh, in fact, Danish Pete showed me this, just fret all the way up and do that. Um, I've also heard people say that there's no such thing as stretching a string. All you're actually doing is getting it seated right on the tuner through the block and in the over the saddles. Don't know, don't. All I know is that when you put them on, they require some settling to stay in tune. <laughs> and I usually find that pretty much that is almost playable now. A couple of big bends. Here's Catherine just come back from the post office with the orders. So I'll sign off for now, play this for a bit, and do an update in, in due course. So there we go, just to confirm 10 and a half, 14, 17, 28, 40, 50. Hello, me again. Right, so what's happening is I've got a rehearsal tomorrow. I've got these strings on, literally. What time did we do that? About half eleven midday today. It's now seven p.m. I've just finished work, so um, I've come in here. We've got a band rehearsal tomorrow, and I've set a few sounds up for the rehearsal and the usual sounds. I'm just going to play the strings a bit and see what I think and see if it really feels much different. Um, the two rock is the wet amp that gets everything. So, for example. <laughs> And then when you switch the dry amp in, which is the victory, you get this. So here's, here's the two rock and then I'll switch the victory in.
Can't reach the Wawa. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. It's a bit of a sort of odd environment because I'm just chumming on here in front of the camera. So I'll cut into that, but they feel absolutely fine. I'm like, I think I'm liking the extra, slight extra heft on the bottom string there. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but it's definitely giving me that, giving me that, I think. Kind of hard to tell, kind of hard to tell. Um, I'm sort of loudish, but not, not massively loud. So we'll see how it goes for the rehearsal tomorrow. Maybe I'll do an update after we've rehearsed, but that's all sounding pretty sweet. What you heard there, I'll do a sweep over. You heard varying combinations of um, my Maxon OD9, the J Rocket Dude, uh, and the Clon stacked with the gain sounds, Analog Man ARDX20 for the delay, and also Belly Pop Deluxe for the delay. Um, Supro tremolo mini vent, all the stuff that's usually on my board. Um, yeah, sounding sounding okay, sounding okay. Still getting used to how everything stacks together, but all all three of them. Well, I'll leave you on that, perhaps. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 